Welcome back to another video on nonlinear dynamics. In this lesson, we'll talk about classifying two-dimensional linear dynamical systems using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Recall from a couple of videos ago that a general way of writing a two-dimensional linear dynamical system is as follows. You can also recast these equations in matrix form, which I'll do right over here. I can label the derivative vector as x dot with an arrow over it, the coefficient matrix as capital A, and the function vector as x with an arrow over it. If I do that, I end up with the following matrix equation for my linear dynamical system. I'll call this equation 1. Now remember from the last couple of videos that the example we solved was a special case of this 2D linear dynamical system. Specifically, this is what our example looked like in matrix form. Remember also that the solution to this dynamical system for the initial condition x0, y0 was the following. We can break this up into a linear combination of separate solutions involving the different exponentials so that we have x0 times 1, 0 times the exponential of at plus y0 times 0, 1 times the exponential of negative t. I'll call this equation 2. The next thing I want you to recall is the phase portraits for this dynamical system for different values of a. Recall how in each of the phase portraits the x and y axes were the two directions where the trajectories either converged or diverged from the fixed point, the origin, in a straight line. The trajectory starting on the x and y axes didn't curve away from the x or y axes, they stuck to those axes and remained on them in a straight line throughout. In other words, the x and y axes contain straight line trajectories towards or away from the fixed point. So now that we've pointed these things out about our dynamical system, let's look at some important findings. The first is that if you find the eigenvalues of the coefficient matrix of this dynamical system, those eigenvalues are just a and negative 1. You can refer to your friendly neighborhood linear algebra book for a refresher on what eigenvalues are, but those basics are beyond the scope of this video. Now, do you see a coincidence? Well, it's that the eigenvalues of this coefficient matrix are the powers on the exponential solution in equation 2. The second finding is that the eigenvectors of this matrix are 1, 0 and 0, 1. These are the exact same vectors that show up in our solution in equation 2. I won't calculate the eigenvectors for you over here, but I'll show you another example later on in the video. The other thing to note is that the straight line trajectories we just talked about are in the same direction as these eigenvectors. If we put these findings together, then we could argue that for a general linear dynamical system with some arbitrary coefficient matrix A, the solution X is a linear combination of the two eigenvectors of A, which are each multiplied by the exponential whose power involves the corresponding eigenvalue. Note here that C1 and C2 are constants determined by the initial condition. Let's apply these principles and solve another example. We'll also analyze the solution and sketch its phase portrait. So consider the dynamical system given by the following two differential equations. If we write this in vector or matrix form, this is what it looks like. Now recall that the eigenvalues of A given by lambda and the eigenvectors of A given by V satisfy this equation. If we rearrange this equation by moving everything to the right, this is what we get. Now, I can subtract a scalar like lambda and a matrix like A, that straight up doesn't make sense. However, what I can do is put in the identity matrix between lambda and V, which I'm allowed to do because it's just the identity matrix. No matter what vector I multiply it with, I get the same vector. It's just like multiplying by 1 except in matrix form. If I take the eigenvector common, this is the matrix equation I end up with. I'll call this equation 3. Now the way to find the eigenvalues is take the determinant of the lambda i minus a matrix. And if this matrix multiplying the vector v is a zero vector, the determinant of this matrix must be zero. Solving this equation for lambda will give us the eigenvalues of a. So let's get started on this. If we write down the two matrices in this determinant equation, this is what we have. We'll put together the matrices to get the following, and then we'll find the expression for the determinant, which is literally just AD minus BC for a 2 by 2 matrix. We'll expand out the equation and get the following. Next, we'll factor this quadratic expression and get lambda plus 3 times lambda minus 2 equals 0. The two solutions to this are negative 3 and 2, and these are the eigenvalues of our coefficient matrix. Let's go ahead and find the eigenvectors. The way to do that is to go back to equation 3. If we want to find the first eigenvector v1, we need to use the first eigenvalue lambda1, which is negative 3. 
If we use lambda 1 now and apply it to our matrix equation, this is what we get. Note that v1x and v1y are the x and y components of the eigenvector v1 respectively. If we solve for the two components, this is what we get for the first eigenvector v1. Now, if we want to find the second eigenvector v2, we need to use the second eigenvalue, lambda 2. If we use lambda 2 now and apply it to our matrix equation, this is what we get. Note that v2 sub x and v2 sub y are the x and y components of the eigenvector v2 respectively. If we now solve for those components, this is what we'll get for v2. So in the end, based on what we discussed up over here, the solution to this linear dynamical system is given by the following, which we just got by directly plugging in the eigenvalues and eigenvectors into the general solution we specified earlier on in the video. Note that c1 and c2 are constants that depend on the initial conditions. Let's now draw the phase portrait of this dynamical system. To get started with the phase portrait, let's mark our fixed point, which is the origin in this case. Remember, the derivative is zero at the origin in our original differential equations, which is why the origin is a fixed point. Let's next draw two lines in the direction of the eigenvectors going through the origin. The first line is in the direction of 1, negative 4, the first eigenvector, and the second line is in the direction of 1, 1, the second eigenvector. Let's go back to our solution now. If my initial condition is such that C2 is zero, so the second component is gone, this is what my solution will look like. On the phase portrait, what this looks like is a trajectory that starts in the direction of this first eigenvector and converges in a straight line towards the origin. So no matter where I start along this eigenvector's direction, my solution will converge towards the origin in a straight line. So this eigenvector essentially represents my stable manifold. That is, if I start anywhere on the stable manifold, I will stably approach the fixed point. I will converge to the fixed point. On the other hand, if my initial condition was such that C1 was zero, so the first component vanishes, this is what my solution ends up being. On the phase portrait, what this looks like is a trajectory that starts in the direction of this second eigenvector and diverges in a straight line away from the origin. So the line spanned by the second eigenvector is effectively my unstable manifold. That is, if I start anywhere on this manifold, my trajectory will diverge away from the fixed point in a straight line. In other words, my trajectory on the unstable manifold will converge towards the fixed point in a straight line if time is reversed, if I go backwards in time. So that should cover my fixed points and manifolds. Let's briefly talk about the parts in between the manifolds. Basically, what you need to know for those parts is that the trajectories will approach the origin in the direction of the stable manifold and then run away from the origin in the direction of the unstable manifold. You can repeat this process for each area of the phase portrait and end up with the following diagram as our final phase portrait of this dynamical system. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I've shown you a pretty quick way of how to deconstruct a two-dimensional linear dynamical system and using just the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, sketch a complete phase portrait of that dynamical system. I don't even really have to solve these differential equations. I can just use the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and fixed point to discover its behavior in different situations. Now, in this video, I talked about real and unique eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In the next video, I'm going to talk about special cases like when the eigen values are the same, and even in cases where they're complex. If you enjoyed the lesson, feel free to like and subscribe. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.